If you're a YouTube creator, one of the most important things to learn about is your YouTube analytics. So today we're looking at the YouTube analytics and 10 insights that you need to know about next time you use it to improve your YouTube content. So let's get into it. One of the things that people always do is whenever they have a video, let's say we have a video with 1 million views here, they would then look at metrics such as CTR, which is your click-through rate, how likely are people to click on your thumbnail. And then they look at AVD or APV, which is the retention percentage or how long people watch in your video. Now, this is the problem is people could be like, hey, I'm going to look for 8% CTR. And if it's good, then I wanna keep making thumbnails and titles like that. If it is lower, such as 5% CTR, then, you know, I gotta stop doing that one. And if it's higher, for example, like they say 10%, then we wanna make more videos like that one. But in fact, this is actually a very flawed approach. And the reason for this is very simple. This is what we're trying to achieve. We're trying to get more views, but we're not trying to get higher CTR. We're only trying to get higher CTR if that gives us more views. But whenever we do an analysis, and I encourage you to do an analysis on your own channel, you wanna see if an increase in CTR actually means an increase in views. And a lot of times you actually do not see that to be the case. Higher CTR doesn't necessarily mean higher views and lower CTR doesn't necessarily mean lower views. Let me show you an example. So to prove my point, I wanna show you two examples of a video. The first video scores high in views, but has a lower CTR, while the second one scores lower in views and has a higher CTR. Now this obviously is a little bit of selection bias just to prove a point, but that's just to get to it. What I recommend is just check for your own content if you're a creator, but just know every single time whenever you want to use something, understand what is your success metric, your most important metric, and whatever metric you want to use, does it correlate with that success metric? If the answer is yes, then you can use it. If the answer is no, then you cannot really use it confidently. The next thing that I want to talk about is stop looking for useless metrics. Sometimes you'll hear people come up with these crazy metrics such as your comment to view ratio. And the problem with that one is that, again, sure, it's a metric, but the question is, does a higher comment to view ratio lead to more views? Yes, or no? Or does a lower one lead to more views? Yes or no? We want to know that because don't think about weird metrics unless we can truly connect them to our success metric. And if it doesn't correlate, that's typically not a metric we want to be using. And I've heard some crazy metrics such as what's your retention percentage after 30 seconds? And then people look at that one and they say that needs to be as high as possible, which is not true. We've looked into it a lot. Often we didn't find any correlation at all. The next thing I want to talk about is that the algorithm doesn't always instantly know the right audience. You see, in a past video, algorithm video, check that one out as well. It's a very valuable video. A lot of people think that you upload a video and the algorithm just pushes that video to an audience. And then based on the performance of that audience, it's going to recommend it to a further audience, yes or no. And then that's how it's going to do that one. Now, this is not really how the algorithm works. Now, yes, in this case, if it tests and perform bad, it's going to stop promoting and views die off. But if they respond well, the views go higher. What in reality happens, and this is a shorter explanation, whenever you make a video, it goes into some big database. Whenever a user logs in onto YouTube and gets recommendations, YouTube looks at the database and thinks, hey, what are the right videos to suggest to this user? And initially it might always think, hey, you know, I don't think this is gonna fit this user. But if a lot of similar users log in and, and at some point YouTube realized like, you know what? Actually that video is good for this user and it might take a little bit longer for a video to then kick off and get its views. So give videos enough time to succeed and don't instantly judge a video simply because it didn't form in its first 24 hours. Some people do first hour or even the first week or two weeks. Metrics tend to become reliable once you pass that one month mark. But again, this does depend on the type of content that you're making, especially if you make news content, then yes, the earlier performers could matter. The fourth tip that I want to talk about when it comes down to audience analytics is do not undervalue the retention charts. The retention charts are one of the most valuable pieces of information that you can find on your YouTube analytics. And that's the reason why is because if if the number and the metrics and the percentages are good or bad, here's one thing that you and I can both agree on. If the chart goes down, we know that people are tuning out and that something is bad, right? If the chart stays flat, then we know that people stay interested. If the chart overall stays flat, then we know that the audience that is watching this one is overall not really losing interest. If we see that the chart is gradually going down over time, then we know that people are slowly getting bored and we might need to add more exciting moments. So what 
whatever it is, the retention chart gives you somewhat of the most accurate representation of how the audience feels while watching your content. And that's why data piece is one of the most valuable pieces on your YouTube Studio dashboard. That does bring me through the fifth insight though, which is that your data, including your retention charts, gets affected by your audience reach. So if we take an earlier example where the retention chart stays very high and flat, some could say that as like, that is a really good thing because you know, the audience that got served that reacts very well. Well, we can also assume that maybe that was only your core audience that really liked this video and any newer type of viewer didn't really like your video too much. YouTube never even suggested that video to those viewers and their behavior, which would normally be like this, never impacted this retention chart. This high views of your core audience does, seeing how everybody will feel about your video, but only those who YouTube believed would respond positively to your video. So if I see high flat retention charts, typically what I think is that we have what we call a wide appeal issue. This video seems to be great for the audience that it appeals to, but it doesn't seem to appeal to a very wide audience. So you may need to broaden your topics or maybe there is too many references that only your core audience will get. Here's a next tip about your data or especially about the retention chart because I talked about how valuable it is. You know, some things are not showable in your data. So if you think about, for example, a thumbnail and you use the red color as a background or a green color as a background, how do you know which of these is better? Some could say a B testing feature, but I'll talk about that one later in this video about how it's not as good as people think it is. But overall, it's not always very, very easy to think about every single little thing that matters to viewers. And especially when it comes down to our retention charts. Think about, for example, your music and the tone that your music sets. It's not gonna be that you swap your music and suddenly there's gonna be a dip, right? Because people are like, oh, I hate this music. You have to do a really bad job. So are thinking about how funny are you actually as a creator? It's very difficult to spot that within any of your data on YouTube. And my advice here is this, if you want to improve your YouTube content, don't just think about the visual things in your data. Use your visual things in your data and inform them to understand the biggest mistakes, like the tone of your video, your likeness, you know, who is in your content, the music, the cutting speed. All those things also matter about how people experience your videos. So not everything is visible in your data. Data is limited. The next thing that I want to talk about when it comes down to YouTube analytics is that people use a lot of the metrics and look at that and they see their numbers go up and they see them go down. The problem is that if I then ask you, what actionable insight did you get from this one? What did you learn from your, let's say you use your CTR and you know, I'm not the biggest fan of CTR because it doesn't correlate views, but let's say you for some reason found this to be true. Then the question is, okay, what did you learn here? Did you learn to smile more? Did you learn to include your face more? Why did you even look at the data if you're not going to look for practical insights? So here's the number one lesson about using data. Use it to inform yourself and make better decisions in the future. That's the reason why, again, like retention chart so much. What we can do is very simple. Whenever we see the retention chart and we see that dip here, we can learn that when I transition from segment one to segment two, we notice that there's a sharp drop. And the longer that it takes for me to transition from one segment to another, the bigger the drop is going to be, the more people I lose. So maybe I should shorten my transitions and get faster into the next segment. That's practical insights. So no matter what data you use and no matter what data you look at, always look for practical insights. That's the goal of data analysis, not just to brag about higher numbers. And that's even when it comes down to views, make sure you always get practical insights. Even if it's just a simple lesson as this video was more widely appealing and got more people interested in it. Eight little insight that I want to give is do not underestimate the difference of new and returning viewers. And there's actually some ways to segment your audience in your YouTube analytics. Even with your retention charts right now, you can go to your retention chart and then you can break it down by new and returning. It's a very new feature, which allows you to not just check your overall retention, which might look like this, but then you can also see, hey, the return returning viewers, they actually watch very similar to that one. While the new viewers, if you purely focus on that one, and that could be a shorter audience, they could respond more like this. And this insight is very interesting because you can see different flaws based on retention chart you are following. Sometimes break down your retention chart by this. Also break down in general your video. Understand, are you reaching a wider audience? Yes or no. Are people returning to your channel? Yes or no. Are your videos leading to more newer viewers returning to your channel? Yes or no. All those data points are often overlooked and can be incredibly valuable. The ninth insight, and it's a very quick one because it kind of already doubles down on some of the things that I said, is that there is no magic numbers. There's no 70% retention that you need to hit. I'm going to show you a video that has over 100 million views, exclusive insight for this video, 100 million views, and look at the retention. So let's make this fun. You know, I want you to guess, considering that this video has over 140 million views, what's the percentage that you think this video has, a retention percentage? 
Well, if you think 60 or 70 or 80%, which a lot of people will, maybe you don't, you'd be wrong. And if you're lower, look at this, it's 42%. It's way lower than people say. Again, 140 million. How many people have told you, hey, you need to hit 70% or even higher? It's not true because it depends on how many viewers did it get served? Did it get served to a wider audience? Yes or no? All these questions start to pop up. Let me even look. You know, people always say you need these high retention charts that stay like extremely high and stuff. Well, guess what? There you go. That's how the retention chart looks like. People think this is a terrible retention chart. 140 million views. And there's a lot of insights. We know that the second segment didn't do as well. First segment here, there is some insights that we can create from this one. But again, don't be deceived by some magic number that you need to hit. It's not true. There is some data to prove. Obviously, I've blurred a little bit of extra information. That's because I want to keep certain things confidential. But still, this is just to give you an idea that there is no magic number. And just to double down even more, I've also added quickly the CTR. A lot of people think there's some high CTRs and 10% CTR need to hit. Guess what? Also, it's a magical number though. But there's nothing about this one that is a 10% or higher, what people will tell you to do. And the last insight that I want to share with you about YouTube Analytics is being patient enough to allow the YouTube algorithm to serve your video multiple times. Here's the thing. How many times have you gone to YouTube and you go to your homepage and you try to figure out what to watch next and you see this one video and the next time, the second time that you log in onto YouTube, guess what? That same video is being served to you again. And then the next time you log in, it's served to you again and again and again and again and again. YouTube doesn't just give up on a video whenever it sees you not to click on it instantly. Some videos, they need more time. So that's the reason when you do thumbnail changes or you do an A-B test, a three-day A-B test, for example, that could result into flawed data because you're not instantly going to have the understanding of how your video performs for all audiences. There's a lot of content, including podcast channels, that need those multi-exposures of a thumbnail and title before people click on it. So whenever you do a change in thumbnail and you don't see instant results, don't think that it's not working. Just give it enough time. When you make a change, and let's say this is your views, right? And your views are not growing great. And let's say here's your change here. Does it actually improve? Does it just keep the same trajectory and nothing happened? Or does it decline? I look for long term. Most people, they look for like 24 hour performance. But if I see this, yeah, sure, quickly, because maybe people just think it's a new video. But this is not a good change. What you want is you want to change the trajectory. This is clearly different because at first this was on pace to do this here. And now it went better than usual. That's a good change. But that's a long term observation. So anyways, I hope you like these more advanced insights when it comes down to your YouTube analytics and a little bit of extra and hopefully it helps you with making your content and please share this with others as well so that people are well informed about these magic numbers and all the other things. If you like this make sure to leave a comment to let me know about it and I will see you in the next one. Thank you very much.